family has raided the piggy bank, and we're now traveling the world to experience, up close and in person, all the natural wonders and distinct cultures that our kids are studying in school. We're still here in the best city in the world according to Travel and Leisure. And part of what makes San Miguel so cool is its eclectic food scene. So we're taking a little break from filming our upscale restaurant tour to search out the great eats that were most recommended by locals. These bites may not be as adventurous as some of the street foods we just tried in Cebu City, but they're bound to be every bit as delicious. Let's start devouring. We're at a local favorite. We're gonna get a local favorite. Carnitas Tacos at Carnitas Batista. And we are on Salida a Celaya. I said that right. And it is a street that is just on the outskirts of Central San Miguel. So we're gonna get some tacos. We're gonna do uh, four Carnitas Tacos. Cuatro, cuatro. Instead of eating on the street, we were lucky enough to find a spot back here overlooking the garden, the Jardin. El Jardin. But I want to tell you a little bit about the history of carnitas in Mexico. Legend has it that in 1521 in the Aztec Empire, there was a man, Hernan Cortez, that hosted a big banquet. He butchered a pig and cooked it with what was available, which was its own lard. And then he served it to everybody and it was muy delicious and that's how the carnitas was born. In a sense, I would say that carnitas here is a little bit like when we were in the Philippines. Everything's about lechon. It's a pork dish. This is not the roasted suckling pig that lechon is. Their version of a pork dish uh, that's kind of a national treasure and something that they're very proud of and a lot of places make it in very unique ways, and it's one of our favorite things to have whenever we come here. Now, I'm gonna get started with one of these tacos, and I'm going to put on some of these delightful little sauces. Uh, it looks like we have maybe a tomatillo salsa back here, some limes, of course. Uh, this looks like a roasted salsa verde. We've got some pickled peppers and onions, and a pico de gallo. So I'm gonna go with, actually, a combo. Put the salsa verde right there, and then do some of this what I think is tomatillo. And I'm absolutely gonna squeeze a lime, and off we go. And of course these are fresh, house-made tortillas. Literally just made them right now, pulled right off of the cooktop. Mmm. Wow. The salsa's really come through. So fresh and light, and oh, the lime also. Adds so much to it. I wanna kinda get a bite with just the, the pork. Taco Tuesday! Whoa. It's like perfectly cooked, but it tastes kinda raw. Taco Tuesday. Mmm. 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 Yes, yes, yes. It is so salty in like the best way. And why Cole, I think, feels that it's raw, I think what he's describing is how it melts in your mouth. Really good sauces, too. Mmm. I'm gonna pick the carrot. Mmm. So excellent. So many more delicious bites to taste, a lot to offer here. You coming with us? Check out this giant. It's a de los de los Miracles big boy. Now we're back in El Centro in the downtown area, and for our next very authentic dish, we're going to try a mocajete. And it's gonna be at a local favorite hotspot that is called Los Milagros. There are so many types of mocajete. They've got arrachera, pollo, camarón. We're going to get one called the Especial because I said, what is the most authentic here in town? And she said, it's definitely the Especial. It's camarón, which is shrimp, arrachera, which is a steak, cecina, which is also a steak, and pollo, which is chicken. So we're gonna get a combination of those. And the mocajetes is a ground kind of protein dish that's in the big pestle mortar presentation. Brooklyn's settling for a Sprite, apparently, but Colt went with the horchata. That's a traditional Mexican drink made with rice milk, cinnamon, sugar, and vanilla. Is this milk and cinnamon? Does it taste like the cereal milk yeah. left over from Cinnamon Toast Crunch? It's not the one like it. It's that there's no difference. The smell. Yeah, it's very <laughs> good. And now I can't stop thinking about Christmas because of what Colt said. Now for the adults. I was saying Amanda is our in-house bartender, and she ordered us the mezcal, and we're gonna do this right. Now, I'm observing here, these look like the lemon limes that we learned all about from Nima. Chef Stephanie that we had over for our other episode. You'll have to check it out. Because Lima. Lima, because it is a hybrid mix of a lemon and a lime. It's like a Sprite. It's the Sprite of fruit. <laughs> I don't usually do shots, 
Uh, so Amanda's gonna have to refresh my memory on uh, how do we do a mezcal shot. Take your lima and put a little right here. Okay. Just to, to just to make your lima put it like here. Mm -hmm. Got it. All right. Okay. So salt shot lima. Got it. I am nervous. Here it comes. I've seen her do way worse than this. Okay. If you want to see me drunk though, you should check out our ah. keto episode. Ah. Okay, sorry, go, 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 go. Oh, that's yummy. It tastes like an orange. All these things are good. <laughs> Look how lame I am. This is how bad I am at shots. I'll still finish it. Mmm, delicious. Now it's party time. All right, time to dig into this incredible looking mocajete. And we've got some very fresh stone ground corn tortillas here, refried beans, guacamole, and then all the fixins. But really, this is what I'm interested in. And you can see we've got the two kinds of steak right here, and we've got shrimp, and we've got the chicken, we've got onions in here, and then this looks like ranchero cheese. That looks phenomenal. The ranchero cheese. That is cheese that's made on a ranch here in Mexico. It's very authentic. Uh, a family probably made that and sold it to the restaurant. Mm. Smells incredible. Made yeah, here nice. today. Very fresh and all natural organic ingredients. Love it. This is my favorite thing about travel is that you're finding places that make things organically fresh from families that aren't overly processed the way you do when you're at home and in your comfort zone and you just go to grocery stores. Not here. My steak burrito is so good. All right, well, I'm gonna load this up. We're gonna layer it. Beans. I'm taking some of this. Oh my God. Gosh, it's ranchero cheese. Look at that. It's going right there in the oh middle. And then since the kids are devouring the steak, Hold on, honey, I'm gonna go in for this chicken here. Some final layers here. Can't live without this salsa. This is it, this is what we live for. Moments and bites like this. Mm. I've said it before, food is better when you make it. And this is part of it. It's as if we've made it because we're assembling it ourselves. This whole process reminds me of community and sharing, and it's a local favorite, so also the culture. We love traveling with you so much. Cheers. Don't you laugh at me. This is an unbelievable amount of food. They say that this one mocajete is good for like two people, but honestly, this could feed four adults. This has to be like, three or four orders of uh, fajitas. This is 10,000 times better than any kind of fajitas we would get in the state. We've got to put this little stop to bed. I mean, we've got to put me to bed. We're getting some ice cream on the streets in the town square right in front of the big church. Look, they've got queso ice cream. Very interesting. Hola. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, that's a We took a very, very short ride just outside of town to famous Barbacoa Rodriguez Familia. And we're gonna have, you guessed it, Barbacoa, which is a method of cooking where you cook the meat in the ground for long periods of time with lots of seasoning, and it's covered in magai leaf, very similar to cacti. So of course we wanna have something as adventurous as possible, and this is no Philippines when it comes to eating very unusual things for Americans. But in addition to the barbacoa tacos, we got one maronga taco, and that is blood sausage. They also have a tripe taco here, which is stomach lining from a lamb, but we've had that before in Florence, so we wanna mix it up and do something different, so we're gonna go with the blood sausage. And this is consomme. It is a soup with garbanzo beans and potatoes, very aromatic. Mm. And you're supposed to put a little lime in it. We observed other people at their tables. <laughs> It definitely has like a pork smell, like it's probably made from the broth after cooking the pork. It's really good. I can hold my hair out of there. Oh, it's so good. Amanda, it's so good. It's really good, I'm gonna put some lime on it. Oh, it's really good. I'm gonna dive into this maronga taco. It actually looks super flavorful, because in addition to the meat, I see celery, maybe, peppers, onions for sure. And by the way, do you see how it has two corn tortillas on this? I always thought that's because corn tortillas fall apart pretty easily a lot of the time, and so you're supposed to use two to help them stick together, but that's not the case. Apparently, you're supposed to eat with just one tortilla, and whatever falls apart and falls out, you pick up with the other tortilla, and that's your second-hand taco. So, let's get this. All right, blood sausage. 
So soft, melts in your mouth, somewhat spicy, incredible flavor. Yeah, a lot of pepper and spice in this one compared to like the carnitas. It'll be interesting to see how this compares to your barbacoa, honestly, because that looks like it doesn't have too much sauce on it. Mmm, that's really good, really good. I get to try one quick bite of Phil's. Mmm, really delicious. And all those spices and flavors are coming out. Now, the showstopper, the barbacoa. <laughs> and this only has one tortilla. She's making them fresh right over there, one after another. Smells really good with that corn masa. We've heard good things about these. Mm. And that flavor that meat has when it's been slow cooked for so long. It's like melt off the bone, in your mouth melting still. I'm just going with my gut on that move. Mmm. Mmm. You gotta try it that way. I blew my own mind. All right, guys, you can pick out one piece of candy. Like, I love it. Is this like supposed to be a key or something? Now in the United States, barbacoa is almost always associated with beef. And even though today this was in fact beef, in Mexico, just as frequently it could be goat, it could be lamb, it could be mutton. There are even parts in the southern Yucatan that will make it with pork. It's a family run place here and they perfected that recipe. We're all done. It was a beautiful start to the day, but since we're already a little bit outside of town, we're gonna go further and we're gonna show you something very beautiful and very natural. Let's go. We've driven 20 minutes out of town to Atotonilco, and that is a small town that has a lot of cool history and culture, but as you can see, we brought towels because Atotonilco literally means hot water, and we're going to the hot springs called Escondido Place. They have 10 indoor and outdoor hot springs, natural. And we're gonna check out some of the indoor pool food. It feels nice. Oh, it's very hot. Look how beautiful this is with the glass ceilings. All the light that filters in here. It's so relaxing. Perfect for temperatures. But I want to see what's over there too. Because there's like another little tunnel-ish area. We're going around here because the gentleman over there behind us just told us that there's a waterfall in this one. It's like a little sweet. Only Colt within seconds, he's finding a critter, an animal of any kind. And he knows all about it. I mean, so I'm not the biggest but... turtle guy, I'm more of a snake and lizard guy. He is more of a snake and lizard guy. I'm pretty sure it's a red ear slider. See that? That's his red ear. The grounds are beautiful, peaceful, serene, and expansive. Multiple acres and many, many fresh ponds that are fed from the natural hot springs. Uh, and they're full of fish, tons of wildlife and uh, animals around here. You saw that Colt found turtles already. Uh, the fish are huge. And lots of really cool shaded areas to have a picnic if you wanted. We saw that there's a spa here. There's just so much to do. And we're gonna walk around for a bit. The hot springs are just scattered kind of all over the place. So here's one that's not even inside. It's just like a hot tub outside. Amanda's off with the kids for the moment. We have a little privacy. Ooh, I, we have a lot of privacy. We're the only ones in here. Lovely. Oh, it goes deeper. Oh, it's a lot bigger. And there's even another tunnel. Oh, this is awesome. I feel like we keep discovering more and more. <laughs> and like you'd never know it. You like look around a corner and it looks like this little tiny hot tub that then no, there's like more and more and more. Ooh. Wow. There's something else that's really special about a Toto Nilco. The town is also known for its church, which is a UNESCO World Heritage Site, and it's called the Sistine Chapel of the Americas because of its artistic and architectural significance. The front doors alone are hundreds of years old. 
It's so beautiful. I uh, have those in our house. But I'm really hungry. We got to get back to the food. We're going to have some gorditas for lunch because we're at Gorditas Don Ciro. Thank you. I don't like how there's like things in there, but you're supposed to drink it. <laughs> that one's kind of... Woo! This blue corn tortilla is very hot. Uh, gordita. A gordita. <laughs> so a gordita kind of reminds me of a pita because it's a circle, but it opens up in the middle and then you stuff it with the meat and all the fixings. And for us, the fixings are very similar to this morning. We have the pickled onions and veggies, shoving those right down in there. And we have two different kinds of salsa. This one is a tomatilla. Tomatillo. Tomatillo. It's fire roasted. You can smell the smoke off of it. So I've got to use this stuff. Mmm. Mmm. So mm -hmm. We all just shake our heads. Yep. Yep. We know it's good. The gordita itself is so rustic. Such a hearty taste and texture. And then the meat inside is delicious and juicy. And you can see the juice is kind of falling out of here too. Yeah. Woo. I'm such a purist. A lot of times I like to just not even put anything extra on these. And as good as that stuff looks, I'm going to try it without first. I'm starving. I want to dive in. Look how thick that gordita part is. So much thicker than a tortilla. One half of it is thicker than a tortilla and you have two halves. That's so good. And this meat, by the way, is migaja, which literally translates to crumb and it just means it's the little pieces of pork. Mm. So it tastes like little chunks of carnitas, but with additional seasonings and, and sauce on there. Every bit as good as carnitas may be better. Oh, wow. Now, we had just enough. We're not fully stuffed yet because we have another stop to go today. Now we're back in central San Miguel and we're going to an all around favorite, Pueblo Viejo. Ready for some uh, mezcales? Oh yeah. I mean, it's my drinking buddy today. Yeah. Here we go. There might be some channel sleuths out there that recognize we've been here before about a year and a half ago when we were doing a taco and tequila tour. But since this is an episode about the locals favorites, we had to come back because it's a local favorite. It's also really close to the church in the town square, so a lot of tourists like to come here as well. You're usually going to see it pretty packed. I wanted to show you one of my favorite things that's pretty unique. It's called wheat licoche. It is mold. So when the corn gets a little too much water, mold grows around it and it turns black. And that actually becomes something very delicious to eat. It's a unique flavor that I really enjoy. And so what they have here is a corn soup with wheat licoche in it. So wheat licoche has uh, maybe a little bit of a creaminess to it, but there's more body in it. It's a unique flavor, and it also is a bit subtle too, and I really love those subtle flavors and things that, that like kind of pop and wow you. Like it's different, but it's not overpowering. And that's what I like about wheat licoche. All right, for me, after the experience we had with the balut in the Philippines, I have to do the most adventurous thing on the menu. So we got some beef tongue tacos. Now the beef tongue doesn't look very wet, so I'm just gonna do one tortilla instead of the two tortilla trick. In case you're wondering what beef tongue means in English, it's a uh, direct literal translation is beef tongue. <laughs> the tongue of a cow. This is a great little bite. It tastes a lot like steak. It's a very similar flavor, which would make sense because it's still cow muscle at the end of the day. But it's also much more tender. So it's like a cross between, I would say beef and mushrooms maybe. Brooklyn's gonna try it. She loves steak, so it shouldn't be a problem. And she's had the loot. I need one from the bowl. This one, this perfect piece. I picked it out just for her. But wait, there's more. The best is yet to come. Let's go. We're at Tortitlan, and they have the best tortas in San Miguel. If you don't know what a tortas is, it is basically a sandwich in Mexico. That is one huge torta, look. I mean, that's, that looks like two tortas to me, but that's just what I'm used to. So I got the Allende, obviously named after the city. I just feel like anytime I go anywhere and something on the menu represents that city, I always try it because I figure it's gotta be pretty unique to that city. So the Allende is skirt steak, it's chorizo, and it's fried beans. This bun is basically like a French roll. You can tell that it's soft inside, but it's kind of crunchy on the outside. Oh, and look at that, Colt, it even has avocado on there. Oh, that's really good, and that bread is phenomenal. It really is crunchy on the outside, 
but just the thinnest layer, so it's not hard to bite into. It's not gonna destroy the roof of your mouth or anything. And I gotta tell you, I don't have any refried beans. I do have avocado. So, a little lost in translation from the menu there, I think. But the steak is delicious and the chorizo adds so much flavor to it. And this is Classica. It has chopped up pork chop in it, some avocado, lettuce, tomato. It's the classic, but we also have some uh, some sides on the table that we can put on there, and I like to do a little bit of everything on my burgers and sandwiches and stuff. So I'm gonna add some relish and hot peppers. Oh my! Yes, <laughs> yes, how I roll. Mm. Pepper is hot, <laughs> smoking hot, but tasty. The pork is delicious. I love all of it. All of it together comes and makes it super mucho delicioso, but feels right about the bread. So soft, just a thin layer of crunch on the outside, and really gushy and soft on the inside. Excellent dish, yummy. I love it. We have one more stop left. It's gonna be the grand finale. Something that we could not miss coming back here and we cannot let Amanda miss it either. La Cocina. It is owned and operated by one family and they have a very special centuries old recipe. Hey, we're gonna start off with a little cocktail here and some snacks. No, I'm not talking about the chips and salsa and beans. I'm talking about the crickets on our plate. Word on the street is it pairs very well with our really cool, authentic bowls of mezcal. So let's start with a cricket. Oh. You just eat it. That's really good. And then let's take one of our oranges. That cricket's really filling. I almost don't want to bite into this because the mezcal is so good. It's delicious. That's a very good smooth mezcal. I'm not even sure what kind it is, but we'll find out. The biggest cricket here. Yeah. Right here. You ready? Yeah. <laughs> you got it. Mm -hmm. Where's your water? Right here. I love it. It's amazing. That special recipe that I mentioned, it's mole. This mole sauce is insane. It is the best mole I can fathom. I'm gonna get one of these bad boys on my plate. I don't even like mole typically until I had had it from here before and it blew my mind like crazy. So they're stuffed with shredded chicken and it just has the sauce on top and the cheese and that's all it needs because the sauce really is the dish. It speaks for itself. Also, legend has it that the name mole came because long, long, long ago in Oaxaca, where it originated, a priest or a bishop or somebody who was coming to the town to visit, and they had to scramble last minute, and they put everything into this recipe, including a little bit of chocolate, all the spices they had, and it was so good that the guest, the special guest of honor, said, holy mole. <laughs> so now it's mole sauce. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I am saying this right now. If you come to San Miguel de Allende and you only eat one thing, it needs to be this mole enchilada. I dream about this mole enchilada. It is so stinking good. Is it the best mole you've ever had? Best I've ever had. Does it live up to my hype of it? Oh yeah, 100%. Would you scream out, holy mole? Uh, yeah. Well, that's gonna do it for local favorites, but we still have one more episode coming up from San Miguel before we head off on our tour of Europe. So stick with us. We are the Lockwoods, Aaron, Phil, Reagan, Brooklyn, and Cole. We're traveling the world to experience up close and in person, all the natural wonders and distinct cultures that our kids would otherwise be consuming only through textbooks and TV. We think it's a better way to learn and we're working hard to fund this little experiment in the hope that our kids will grow up wiser, kinder, and more grateful for the beauty of our diverse planet and its people. We're getting a local's favorite Carnitas Tacos at Carnitas Batista and it is on Salida A. Sayana. <laughs> Say what, what? What is it? Sayana. Salida A. Sayana. Salida A. Ah. Should I just bite right into it? All right. 
Round two for me. <laughs> I feel like Brooklyn eating a balloon. No, that's too much salt. <laughs>